Hello and welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm Eugene Edwards, coming to you live from Los Angeles. And today we're diving into some simple guitar theory, talking about suspended chords, also known as sus chords. You've probably seen that, seen them uh, that way. I think we've already got some sus puns happening in the chat. Uh, these are really great chords for adding some tension and flavor to your playing. And chances are you probably already know what they are but you didn't know you knew them. Uh, so we'll cover what they are, how to play them, and uh, we're gonna hear some fun performances from our very special guest. Um, helping us with today's topic is an FPL newcomer, Livy Bennett. Livy, welcome. Hello. Hey, nice couch, by the way. Thank you so much. It looks, um, now, uh, uh, <laughs> we're also joined by, uh, as the one and only Dylan Calajuri. The doctor is in. Hello, hello, everyone. <sighs> look, at look at him, look at him, Dr. Suss. Um, <laughs> Livy is a multi-instrumentalist who sings and plays guitar in the fantastic group Mama Larky. And if there's any members of the Famalarky out there watching, welcome. <laughs> uh, and 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 my, Mama Larky had just had a, a, their first album uh, come out at the end of 2020. So we're definitely going to get uh, talk about that a little later. But for now, Livy, tell us. Uh, we like to talk about gear at the top. What are you playing there? I'm playing this '60s modded Ventura Strat. It's my favorite thing in the world. It's really all I play. And yeah, it's just super um, agile, I guess. Like, it's really easy to play bar chords and weird chords in general on this guitar. So, and you do I play weird it. chords. Can can you demonstrate that guitar for us? Sure. A little flub there. It's early. <laughs> It's also, and it's live. Ooh. You're right. It's early and it's live. <laughs> uh, that sounds lovely. And that's your main uh, guitar in Mama Larky? This is, this is my main today. squeeze for sure. And yeah, on tour, everything. Mm. Nice, nice. Uh, and Dylan, what do you, uh, that I recognize that guitar you have there. Uh, this is the Jason Isbell mm -hmm. signature Telecaster. Ooh. A fantastic, I, yeah. Uh, the uh, Can we hear a little bit of, this is, this is a really, really, really good model, this by the way, guys. Not, not guys. No kidding. So... <laughs> Very, very good. Uh, so, and then this is the, uh, I don't know, this is about two years ago, the American original, uh, kind of, it's it's the American original, and I love it. It's uh, very, very reminiscent of the tel the custom shop uh, 63 reissues that I normally play on the on the Dwight gig. Anyway, uh, and this is Fiesta Red, by the way, in case anyone was it. It almost, if the lighting's not great, but if you look at it in person, it kind of looks like the color of Campbell's tomato soup with a little cream to it. it oh, I see that. Mm -hmm. There's some mm -hmm. where, yeah, mm -hmm. Andy Warhol. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Put, put me in the marketing uh, team. All right, let's get to it, guys. So everyone wa watching, if you have questions about tonight's topic, drop them in the comments and we'll try to get to them. Tonight's episode is going to start with the absolute basics and then we'll build towards the more advanced side of things. So we'll have something for everyone. Um, but let's hear, start with hearing some sus chords in a... Uh, uh, What's that, Perry? In, oh, producer Perry's typing. Oh, that's right. Including basis. We're gonna. We have a little stuff. There's gonna a, a bass is gonna show up uh, in Dylan's hands later on. So that's right. Thank you, thank you for reminding me, Perry. Um, Perry, thank you. Livy, can you play something for us? Just, just kind of, just show off a little bit. <laughs> That was hip. I like it. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So clearly, there there were some chords in there that were not strict major or minor. So let let's talk about them. Dylan, what's give us the textbook definition of sus chords or suspended chords? Right. So uh, the term sus or suspended chord refers to a triad where the middle note is suspended above or below uh, its original tone. So mm -hmm. um, you can basically see, like, if I play an A. C sharp and E, or an A triad, three note chord. So you're telling the top three strings there, right? That's right. C sharp is the middle note, A, B, C sharp, mm -hmm. and then E, right? So I, if I raise the C sharp up to the note D, I end up with A sus versus 
just a regular A chord. So it's mm -hmm. it's really that simple. It's it's a suspension mm -hmm. of the t of the note that basically determines the quality of the chord. Or right. We chord like like I was saying, it's not a strict major or minor. Like I think of That's the, right. the it's like either uh, major chords are happy chords and minor chords are sad chords, and these are neither. It kind of suspends that feeling. It's not dictating right. whether happy. Um. So, uh, Livy, now why do you like to use sus chords? Because I know I know that you use them in your original music. Definitely. And like, it's only been recently that I've really started identifying like the sus chords that I use. Hmm. Um, I think a lot of guitarists tend to just throw these in without thinking about it. Um, but it, it just like adds some interest and tension. Like y'all said, I feel like, yeah, I've heard people call them chords of intrigue. And I feel like that's really true. Like they kind of like, they just stir up some emotion and like they, they're good, like substitutions for like five chords or whatever. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they're just really fun. And I think most guitarists can relate to being like, this kind of sounds major. I think that's what I'm playing. And then like, once you actually sit down and figure out which notes you're playing, it's like, oh, there's a name for that. There's, oh, yeah, exactly. Now I've, I've had students that say they'll, they'll try to learn a song and they'll see like, a S U S and the number four, and they get scared off by it. It's but so scary. It is. It's weird. It's like, what is that? It looks like alphabet soup. Well, we're gonna we're gonna dispel all that here. So let's start with the basics and talk about how to change a basic chord into a sus chord, like Dylan just started. So although it may seem kind of complicated, especially when you see all the numbers in the chord charts, you've probably already played uh, one of or two of them without knowing it. So let's start with the open position chords, Libby. Can you tell us how to make some yeah, open totally. chords? Yeah, totally. They're so easy. Chords? So here's like a D sus. Four. And here's a sus two. Same with the A, we were talking about that. Mm -hmm. I feel like I always think of da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of like a motif in a lot of songs, you know? Yeah. Sorry. Because they're really easy to play. You just kind of, you know, either you're adding your pinky to a chord yeah. or you're letting one of your strings ring open. So uh, Yvonne L. on YouTube is asking, what does four mean in D sus four? Livy, I'll have to So, to yeah, this. if you're thinking about like the degrees of like a scale or like a triad is a, a one, a three, and a five. Mm -hmm. So if you're suspending the third of a chord, you're adding a non like major or minor fourth second into the the triad and omitting the third. Right. So, so that's what that means, I guess. Right. No, no, it is. So, uh, <laughs> it is a, so on a, a D sus chord, D, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's definitely a D chord. And we use the, the major scale in D and we count from the note of D as our one, E natural is our two, F sharp is our three. G is our four. So that's where we get the number four here. And so basically it's a D chord, but with a G, because that's the fourth degree, put into it. Hopefully, Yvonne, that's hopefully. Oh, we have another question oh. from Sarab Nair on YouTube. Hey, Eugene, want to know when it, it it's the right time to play a sus chord in three in a three or four chord progression. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, I'm gonna let Livy answer this because that's that's a nice, uh, it, it touches upon how to use them creatively. So yeah. Livy, how do you determine? I feel like, I, I like I said earlier, I like to substitute them as like a penultimate uh, chord. So mm. going back to a one, it's really nice yeah. to have that in there. And like, instead of a more just like straightforward, <laughs> like, sorry, I'm turned down. Like, you know, five, seven to one. It's more like, it's just, it's, there's something, there's something to that. I don't think any of us here can articulate what it feels like, but. No, you're right. So, in, in fact, uh, we should probably just uh, let you guys hear some open position sus chords in context. So, hmm. uh, so Livy, uh, Dolly Parton. Let's go okay, with some Dolly I'm going to try this. All right. Love you, which you didn't yeah, in major. Which like, I didn't know was a Dolly Parton song, but it is. Oh. <laughs> Kevin yeah, Costner was, did not write that song, folks. No, but he did suggest it. <laughs> oh, Costner did suggested it for that movie, yeah, because because he's a bit of a country guy. So oh, yeah, wow. you had so you had your E major. You started with your E major, mm -hmm. and you just kind of threw your pinky on the second fret of the G. So there. it can be a really passing thing, you know. Instead of just like strumming your one open chord over and over again, it's just like 
it's just a little yeah, something to make it more a, interesting. You can create a little movement there by just kind of throwing your peaky on top of a chord that you already know. Um, here's here's a uh, and then here's an example in a, in a Radiohead song where they play like an A suspended two, like Dylan had showed us, where it's an A chord but you let your open B string ring open. That guy there. So mm. in high and dry, they're you know. They even pause on that in the chorus, right? So it's got this nice. There's some tone song. painting there, right? He's saying, "Don't leave me suspended in midair. Don't leave me high and dry." <laughs> See what and he he's did? Literally suspending the chord. Very good. So no Symbolism. question. Genius. <laughs> it's really, really good. So Dylan, this one's definitely from you. This is coming from Dennis Flock. Dennis is watching on YouTube. Hey, Dennis. Are add nine and add eleven and add thirteen chords suspended chords? in the next octave. Okay, so whenever you add, whenever you see add, it basically mm -hmm. means that it's adding on to a triad without a seventh. So an A major add nine means there's no seventh in that chord. We know that one from every breath you take. That's right, from every breath you take. Um, you can see it if you're if you're fairly new to guitar and easier way to play that is if you've got an E. We've got a great uh, chord lesson for this on the site, by the way, on Fender Play. E major add nine is a great place to start because you don't have to do a huge stretch. And um, they're adding that note onto the chord without the seventh. So they're jumping over a standard tertiary or three part harmony. Uh, did, did you get there you that? Go, Dennis. <laughs> there you go, Dennis. How about this? <laughs> tertiary. Mike, yeah, exactly. You Mike W me. on YouTube, do we always replace the third? Dylan? Uh, yeah. So generally you play, replace the third because that creates the movement back to. Um, to the to the one so usually suspended chords are used either to elongate a one chord so just as as livy was showing a second ago or mm -hmm. they're used to to suspend a five chord so that there's more tension leading back to the release so if i have um mm -hmm. boy if i didn't go there somebody's gonna throw a shoe at me right and then <laughs> right. so the basic concept here is when you're suspending from the four three to the four you create suspension the other type of suspension that we talked about was a two one or a, a two a two suspension i'll tune this eventually but uh the two <laughs> suspension does not necessarily need to resolve it likes to be in the mm -hmm. ether mm -hmm. and so right. that's the that's it so two one or three four are the two common types of and suspension. we like the ether right livy yeah absolutely i'm I, on it right I, now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's like that. Uh, there's so many songs that just move from sus chord to sus chord, and it it feels really good actually. And mm -hmm. you wouldn't think so, but it's like, yeah, it's all about where they lead to. Um, yeah, like voice leading with these chords are really cool. Yeah, yeah. Joni Mitchell uh, does that really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, and so now it's pretty simple also to change well, obviously your open position chords into a sus chord. We've already seen a few there. In fact, you can always think of your five caged chords, by the way, if you're watching at home. You, you know, we showed the D, we showed A, we showed E, but a, an open G chord, I often play it this way, leaving my index available, index finger available to play the first fret of the B string. Ooh, cool. Uh, so whenever I'm teaching lessons, I have to correct myself and play my play my G chord that way because I'm used to kind of doing that. Um, and also your C major chord, very easily. You put your pinky on the third fret of the D string. Or you could do it in two spots. You can do it on your high E string as well. So those are the way that we change the open uh, chords, but we also can do this with bar chords. So um, let's talk about this real quickly. Uh, Livy, can you kind of show how you how you play your suspended chords in bar position? Yeah, I mean, I can try, like, if I was going to do, like, just a, you know, a normal non-seventh suspended chord, that's how I would do it. That's how I would do it. Um, but I don't know. I, to be honest, I don't know much about the cage system. system oh, so I'd be curious to see. Yeah. Well, well uh, Dylan, how about uh, we talk about this? How we take any of those five chords? Now, there's a few of them that are much easier than others, right? Mm -hmm. Let, let's just say, like um, the uh, the our E major, our open E chord here. Now, knows that when we make when we cage this thing up, as I say, like at the third fret, we play a G chord like this. We're basically taking this E shape and we're moving it up. Right. So we can also 
take our pinky and play the the one fret above on the G note where we're playing. Right. Cool. Now, what I do is I use my thumb, and I don't know if I'm allowed to, to show myself doing this, but I, I make it a lot easier myself. I know Brian Whelan's a guest, and he, he advocates this heavily. Is just use your thumb, and it's a lot easier to get that suspended. Where in fact, I did it at, at the beginning. Uh, Pinball Wizard by The Who uh, quite famously kind of builds off this as its main motif. It's, because I'm starting at the seventh fret, so we're on a B chord, which is really just a form of this but because I play it like this, and with the suspension, it's suspended. And then it goes, it gets, what, unsuspended? It gets resolved. <laughs> it gets resolved. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then he's gonna move down two frets to A. And then down two frets to G. And one fret to F sharp. And now, so epic. Again, it has to go to B major at that point because we're we kind of we started on B here. We worked through the changes. We ended up on the five of B. And once you do that, it's you, you gotta, gotta rock out on the B. So so that's an example there. Um, oh, question for Livy um, from Plasma nineteen ninety two. How can I know when to include chords like sus two, sus four, etc. When harmonizing a song? Ooh, I like that question. Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like you could, like, I don't know. I feel like if you're talking about, like, a melody, like, yeah, you could follow the suspended note. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Or you could stay on the root. I mean, I guess in general, yeah. I mean, whatever notes are ringing out, you can always rely on. And then just passing notes throughout the scale of whatever song you're in or uh, key you're in. Um, that's always going to be helpful. Uh, I hope that answered your question, Plasma. Go ahead, Dylan. There's a great example of this. Um, do you guys know the song? Yeah, Suicide is Painless. Ooh. That was the short version, but you can really hear when every one of those... And then... So you can actually hear that the chord progression itself moves with each one of the suspended tones. So they're doing note for note, chord change for every single note in the melody. If you're a beginner on this, you might just start with D and D sus4 or A and A sus4, A sus2, and um, and check out, we, there's quite a few lessons on the site that help you learn those chords, and they're in quite a few songs in path too. So don't get discouraged if this is sounding like a real technical topic. Yeah, it, it yeah. just just start with those those basic shapes and it'll really add a lot to your playing. In fact, we have another. Um, well, actually, uh, while we're kind of like the the mash theme is a great uh, example, <laughs> but Livy, can you can you tell us about some common motifs that involve sus chords? Because it seems like we've already heard some going on here. Yeah, <laughs> I hope I'm understanding your question, but Meaning, I don't know. Like, you, like, you'd like, mentioned at the top, but you'd mentioned at the top how you you're, you're, like, you're always hearing that. Uh, the, Th those sorts of things. I feel like people really like to like trill, I guess, on that. Oh, that's a good example. You can do that on really any any open chord. It's really fun to do that on, I guess. No, that's it's it's a really smart way to do. Also, yeah, like you said earlier, if you're just playing, if you're, uh, I know a lot of a lot, a lot of bands, like a lot of frontmen, if they're talking at the top of a song before the band falls in and they're saying the interesting, they'll be going to kind of be playing. Um, uh, the the chord that the, the song the, the song's in the key of A let's say and they're playing there and they may be talking to the audience <laughs> and you know and I'll, I'll hear this a lot you just kind of they'll do a sus four while they're talking to the audience because they don't really want to pay attention to moving the hand around but they do have some movement going on this is probably it's a good people. time buyer yeah Frankly, for sure yeah but it works someone's you know? gear is like malfunctioning <laughs> and you just need to buy time <laughs> that's right. I'll remember that. That's right. Oh yeah, that's a that's a that's a pro tip right there. Now, Dylan, you um, what what a, uh, now you obviously have picked up a bass. So this is a different thing I'm holding. Yeah, I'm holding a bass because we want to talk a little <laughs> bit about how the bass also has a role in suspensions. And actually, this is a really this is a mod shop bass that um, I picked up and borrowed from the studio. And do they know you've taken this? They do not know, I but now so. I think they're going to. Yeah. But go on. I'm sorry. So basically, the role of a bass player in suspension is massive, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we're, we're sort of 
we're compacting these topics down to something that's that's easy to understand and, and uh, encourage everyone to go out and get more information on this. But a bass player can kind of do two things. One, a lot of times the chords will give foundation or the guitar player or the piano mm-hmm. player will give foundation for the bass player to mess around on top of a sus chord. So we'll give you an example of that. So um, can you play me a... Yes. Actually, give me just a D over C. Oh, or oh, I'm oh, sorry, a C yeah. over D. Sure. That's right. So we were playing over the internet, folks. But you can hear how that that left <laughs> such an open space for the for the uh, bass player to really jam around. Now the next one, the chords but, are going to move. Wait, and Dylan, the bass, Dylan oh, sorry. hold on. I have a question. Shh, I get carried wait, away. No, I know, I know. You're such an excitable boy. Um, is that because the chord I was playing it had that spread that it was so suspended that I did not I didn't force you to commit. That's right. To something you were able to you didn't even force it, me right? to commit to a key necessarily so all yeah, the really. closely related keys and when you guys are checking out the cage lesson on fender play you'll learn more about this concept through each one of those shapes but um Go, the other real, way yeah the other to way. use it is when the when the chords are moving and the bass player generally would stay solid mm-hmm. on a note and he, there creates a suspension tension and release between the two instrument categories so so i'm going to play a little three chord figure right that's right the- We have no idea whether that's in time together, but you can hear how the bass player is holding together the the, the rhythmic, fa- excuse me, the harmonic foundation, so the chords can start to move around, and you still feel grounded. You didn't trip while you were walking on the dance floor. So, right. um, so a lot a of very, roles. You can make a real advanced sound there. That's right. With the role playing, but no one has to do anything that's particularly complicated. Now, Livy, I know there's a chord that you like to use a lot. I think it's like a seventh suspended fourth chord. I think is. That's yeah, it. I really love this chord. I use this all the time. Now, how did you how did you come to that chord? I mean, where how did I mean? So how did that... simple. Yeah, I just moved my pinky up one fret from this barred seventh chord. So it's like an A seven shape. Yeah, you're totally. Barring. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I love that shape. It's classic. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I also love. Um, we we're kind of talking like about how easy it is to really just bar a whole fret and play like the A to B strings. So basically everything but the low and high E. That's a su- suspended <laughs> chord, apparently. Um, <laughs> and you can you can use that any way you like. But my favorite suspended chord, which I also love using my thumb over the neck, is this, which. Now I have a theory uh, whiz over here, so I would be curious. People, I call this like um, E over F sharp, right? Oh yeah. Or is it this chord? Or no, it's not. It's like I'm playing like an E six. Oh, I see what you're saying. With an F sharp on the bottom. Uh, so is it? Uh... <laughs> Go ahead, Dylan. This is what Maybe. it looks like. Yeah. Okay, so I see F sharp, I see the note E, I see the note A, and the note G sharp or C? Yes. Okay. G sharp. And so, C sharp. C sharp. So, yeah. I would call that an F minor 11. Yeah, but you could call it... Uh-oh. Yeah, you could call it... <laughs> see, chords well, are best understood with F sharp in, the base, you know. in the context exactly. of what's around them. So, it's almost That's like right. when you're reading a book and you don't recognize a word... If you read the words around it, you go, okay, now I know what that word means by inference. And that's kind of why chords have these bizarre names. Uh, right. Yeah. Unfortunately, the, the, the names of them are, are far more compli- complicated than the actual fret hand it mm-hmm. requires. So, Livy, we, oh, so we, we've heard how you like to use these chords within your music. Could we hear a song of yours? That probably sure. Uses let's chords? do it. All right. I'll start with one that uh, uses that very chord. And I'm hoping, is this on the album, on the Mama Larky? No, it actually isn't. This oh, one's on not. Spotify, but okay. this was, okay. we'll yeah. We'll, we'll show yep. <laughs> you say you love me. But what does that mean? Love so subjective.
<laughs> wow. That is so cool. That is so, so wacky with, yeah, with the tremolo bar. Uh, uh, you, you know what? I mean, there's that song like, is stressful for me. It's, it's got a lot of chords. And you're moving. Yeah. It uses this this uh, seventh suspended four yeah. chord as well. Yeah, and then, then we saw your your beloved F sharp minor eleven. Is that what Dylan? Yeah. Called? Yeah. Cool. You know what's so cool is like uh, I wouldn't if I didn't know anything about chords or anything about anything at all. I would think that was fantastic and simply because it's so indelible. Like there's so much of your spirit in that, and I can hear you really just kind of like putting everything in there and taking risks and and i like, i wrote that song before i knew what a sus chord was so. well there you go folks <laughs> so okay not so required actually let, let me let me dig into that a little bit so would you just you would just take a, a chord you were with which you were already familiar and you just kind of experimented by moving notes around definitely and I, that's that's the most fun part and i i hear people talk about this all the time of like not wanting to like ruin that illusion and like put a name to something which i totally get yeah. and i'm like in between that space which i think a lot of guitarists feel like the same way but yeah i i had to, i have to figure out what these chords are when i'm trying to teach them to my bandmates <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it usually ends up with me like just naming out every note and then I'm like, you know what? Let's let's actually figure out what this is. And then I realized I use sus chords all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a couple of questions here now that we're, we're getting towards the end before we get to the homework and the giveaways and things. Mm -hmm. So Keith Means, uh, who's uh, in the Keith. Facebook com community. Uh, oh, Livy, what are you playing through? He loves the tone. Yeah. Oh, I'm using this Wampler Ego Compressor, which oh, sure. is just, yeah, I can't recommend that enough. It, it can be used for bass too. It's just something that everyone should have. And I definitely like didn't know that people use compressors at all, like live. And I, that's really like one of the only things that I use live, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just that <laughs> into the box. Okay, so, cool. Wow. Yeah. So, so, so Keith, that you're you're hearing a really good compressor. Um, and this is coming from Tiki Fab on YouTube. Oh. Uh, do you use this is a nice segue? Do you use pedal effects to enhance the suspended? notes that would be really cool like um my friend caleb who did a video with y'all as mm -hmm. well or many videos yeah great, uh, great put me onto part. this uv 300 vibrato pedal which is like super affordable and it's just a nice little vibrato pedal if you don't want to be using your whammy bar every two seconds like i do yeah <laughs> um so yeah that's like a really fun way to just like add color to your chords but also like a chorus would be great um yeah it's quite famously uh, the edge uh, from the beginning of, of playing in U2 uses that, but it's a the delay pedal with a dotted eighth triplet mm -hmm. feel. And a lot of the, like the streets have no name and those things involve that a suspended fourth at the least. And then he gets it kind of ping ponging back and forth and kind of creates that really, I guess now a real iconic U2 sort of sort of uh, tone so yeah. yes absolutely you can use uh, pedal effects and and in fact when you when i get a modulating a pedal of any sort i tend to play like sus fours and sus twos uh delays uh, reverbs chorus things like that yeah because you can kind of get a real nice uh there's one other cool thing we should mention which is you can use pitch shifters with sus chords because of their androgyny <laughs> And uh, you can basically get away with it. So even if you were playing literally just single note lines, those are all sus chords. Or in the simple just the A sus two, if you add a pitch shifter because there's no third, because it isn't claimed by any key, you can really mess around with the pitch shifter and have a great time. So check it out. Oh, there you go, Tiki Fab. Have fun with that one. Yeah. All right. We, uh, we, uh, we're going to now move on to the homework. And we're going to have Dylan assign the homework. Dylan, you're up, buddy. All right. Yes. Yeah. So if you're a beginner from this week, try playing an open sus chord. So like we talked about A sus two or D sus two are two great candidates there. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're intermediate, try playing a sus chord. Ooh, a bar version. Uh, OK, so D sus two. Right. Mm -hmm. Or if we've got A sus four. Those will be good. Those are going to be tough in the beginning. Those are good. They'll be tough in the beginning. And then for the advanced. For advanced, right. Okay, so the Fender Play Challenge. Mm -hmm. So if you're advanced, try learning the intro and or the verse from Pinball Wizard. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Good luck with that, uh, that strum hand. Kind of a flamenco vibe here. You sounded great, by the way. Oh, he did. My jaw Aren't was you dropped sweet? in the intro. Aren't you sweet? This is kind of just right there on the shelf, buddy. Right there. <laughs> 
always have the appropriate uh, uh, vinyl for, for the episode. All right, now, uh, let's get to some giveaways. Everyone's, uh, well, I guess we've created a, a suspended feeling in our audience, haven't we? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you guys are watching the show for the first time, we give away an awesome piece of gear every week. And uh, basically, all you've got to do is be a member of Fender Play. And we've actually given away dozens, if not hundreds, of pieces of gear at this point. So P basses, J basses, acoustic amps, uh, all kinds of stuff. And all you have to do is be a subscriber, and you can try it out completely for free. So um, once you subscribe, you hit your weekly streaks. It's 20 more, 21 minutes of uh, practicing, and you're automatically, automatically entered to win. And I might get to call your name at the end of the episode. So are you guys ready to, to, to hear who won this week? The suspense is killing us. Okay, drum roll, right? Or, or mm-hmm. no, Livy, place a place a spending core while I do the drum roll. Lay B, folks. Woo! Oh wait, Lay. Oh wait, L E I G H. So it might be pronounced Lee. Oh, Lee B. Is, is it, it could Lee? be. Yes, Lee. B, B. Bra- yes. Bravo. Uh, the, the last Congratulations. initial is B. Is Congratulations. Way to go, Lee. Way to go. Enjoy your new bass. Your uh, guitar amp, whatever it is, uh, like I said, a, a J bass, a P bass, uh, take an alphabet and put it in so front of bass. Pick a letter and put it in front of there. Exactly. Congrats to you. So uh, how about the Flender uh, play updates? Dylan? The new Fender stuff, right? So there's constantly new stuff on the site. There is a lesson for every one of the topics we discussed today, whether it be caged, whether it be sus chords, whether it be bar sus chords, they're all on there. So make sure you look through and use the search bar. Uh, a lot. Okay, so <laughs> a brand new full song though. So she loves you. Yeah. She loves you. Yeah. She loves you. Anybody know that? It's by a little known band called the Bait Tolls, right? <laughs> um Do we teach that that cool hair or something like that? <laughs> He does that over a D chord. It's still it's freaking so out. randomly it's in there. I love it. I love it. That was go, the George. bull cut Beatles too. It was the perfect period of time. Uh, our good friend Ben from across the pond, although the Australian one of them, he teaches that lesson. It's fantastic. Make sure you check it out. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Dylan. Okay, now it's time to a huge thank you uh, to our newcomer to Livy Bennett. Now, you. now somebody, you know, you did you've done techniques or tips of the week and stuff mm-hmm. like that for us. So, and I think that's why we're familiar with that Stratocaster of yours. Uh, thank you for helping us suss out sus chords. Uh, and, thank uh, you. I feel like I learned a lot here today as well. You did. <laughs> we, all, we all learned and grew. I, think. I learned a lot. Kind of a, um, now we want to hear what you have coming up. Uh, can you plug something, please? I know you've got a new album. Yes, we have an album out. It's on everywhere. I would love it if y'all listen to it. There's definitely some cool chords in there and y'all can just DM us anytime. I'll let you know what's on there. But so, yeah. So yeah, Mama Larky and just mm-hmm. and what, go to Spotify and search for Mama Larky. Is that kind yep. of the best way to go around it? Okay. And what's the title of the album? Sorry. It's Mama Larky. I just went straight for it. Wow. <laughs> An eponymous Bold. debut, as they say. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, can, can I ask you how you got the name? Oh, yeah. Um, my roommate or like my roommate at the time, let us practice in their room. Like our rehearsal space was in their room and we were just like, th- like trying to think of random names that hadn't been taken before. <laughs> and that's what we came up with. Oh, okay. So it just, it yep. seems, there's right. no symbolism. Can you, I hate, uh, if you don't mind me putting you on the spot, can we, can, can we hear a sample from the record? Like, can you play, sure. like, oh, give us a verse and chorus of something or, or if you don't mind. Sure. I think, I think one of these is a sus chord. wasn't ready for that that was fantastic <laughs> i want to see you guys play when you come to la that oh was, it's so fun really good. the Thank tablature you. for that song must be nuts especially when we get to that to that chorus that's so that's fun. fantastic i love your melodies remind me of the great andy partridge from xtc by the way that's my highest wow. compliment there that is a compliment. I, I, like i don't see that motif coming out of that that when it goes up that minor third 
Uh, really fantastic stuff, people. Thank Check you. out Mama Larky. Um, now, uh, normally we go out uh, on a G chord, but I just want to re everybody, uh, remind everybody to keep safe, keep practicing. We'll see you next week, and we're going to go out on a G sus four chord. Get it? You see? Ready? One, two, three, four. Ooh.